told you it's fresh! But are you not? I don't want to get paid in that yellow man. Then allow me to pay your bullets! Just because I'm telling you the story doesn't mean I will get out of it alive. This is that kind of story. It all started two months ago and escalated really quickly. Mr. Arriba? Please, call me Arriba! I'm not gonna call you that. Come on in! May I offer you a fine glass of milk? Oh no, thank you, that looks yellow. Alright, let's cut to the chase then. The reason I called you here is for you to take care of my project. What kind of project are you saying? Solid. Solid? Solid works. Alright, what can I do for you? Is this an assembly sorry? Yes, yes, it is. Are you making this for you? Okay. Making this for you too? I am, and I want you to do it for me. Don't worry about the money. We shall talk about the money once you do it. It's it's a good thing. All right, I don't see why not. Let's do it. I don't know why. So this is a basic assembly tutorial which covers the concept of assembling for the beginner users. We want to insert some parts and finally assemble them into this mechanism. So I will close this window and start off from the top. I will now insert the base part, but notice it is now the part mode and in order to take it to the assembly mode, go to file and select make assembly from part. We can see the name of our part highlighted in the property manager here, however if I move my mouse to this, to this field over here, you don't see the part at the end of a mouse and why is that? Because the graphical preview is not checked. Once I checked it, I see the highlighted parts at the end of a mouse. Next will be to click anywhere on the field to fix the first part to that point. However, we want to ideally fix the first part to the origin point. So we can either do it the hard way or the easy way. The hard way will be to go to the view and click on the origins. Then you move your mouse to the origin and click and fix your part at that point. The easy way will be just to click on this OK button here. You will then see a letter F which stands for fixed. It means you cannot move the part anymore unless of course if you right click on it and select float. I'm gonna insert the next part. For that I'll go to assembly tab and click on to insert component. I see again the property manager and I have to click on the browse. The reason I don't see the other parts here listed is because they are not open. I'm going to insert the next part using the browse here, but after that, I'll open all of them so you can see them listed here. So the next part will be this one. Unlike the first part, you can't just click anywhere because the second part wouldn't get fixed. However, I will have to mention something here. Assembly section is all about the relation between the parts. To assemble one part to the other, we need to use mate. Once you click on mate, you'll see a series of options here as well as three categories, standard, advanced, with its own series of options and mechanical mates. But don't let it overwhelm you, it's much simpler than that. We will cover and start it by standard mates. Here you see a field which is expecting you to choose two references from two different parts to mate them together. The reference you should choose are usually very in intuitive and SOLIDWORKS also guess the, the right mate for it automatically. For example, if you want to make this circle concentric with this circle over here, what are the reference you should choose? Obviously the circle and of course this circle. Instantly, SOLIDWORKS recognizes concentric as the best option here. You can click OK here, or you can click OK here, that doesn't matter. But before I do that, I want to introduce you to this option here called Align and Anti-Align. It offers you two different possibilities for a mate, usually with 180 degrees variance. We don't need to use this option now. 
It offers you two different possibilities for a mate, usually with 180 degrees variance. But we wouldn't we don't need to use this option now. You see this part is moving only on the axis of the circles. It can go right and left and it can go it can rotate, but it wouldn't go up or down. But I want this part to be exactly in the middle of these two surfaces. Again you have two options, the hard way or the easy way. The hard way will be to measure the distance between these two surfaces, write it down, measure the width of the part in the, in the middle, subtract it from the first value, divide it by two, and use distance made, and have it fixed in the middle like this. But I'm not gonna click OK. The easy way will be to go to Mates, go to Advanced Mates, which has an option called Width, which is made for such situations. It expects you to choose four references, two from the first part and two from the second part. The first two, I'm going to choose the outer surface of my fixed part, and for the second two, I'm going to choose the two outer surfaces from, of my middle part, and click OK. It moves the part exactly in the middle. Now I promise, as of now, I don't want to. I don't want to use the the browse. So I'm gonna open all the parts so I can have them listed here on the left. I'm gonna hold the control key down, select all of them. And it could take a while. Now, if I go to insert component, you will see all the parts listed here on the left. Let's insert the cylinder. We need to fix the lock to this surface here. Again, I will use the circles to have them concentric with the yellow part and use this surface here to make it coincident to the right position. Now, I need two of these parts. So either I have to re reinsert this part or dupl duplicate it by holding the control key down Drag this part, let go of the left mouse key and let go of the control key. Again these circles. And the surface make it coincident and make it fixed. Now the cylinder should be here. For the sake of the argument, I'm going to choose the wrong surface so we could use align or anti-align. Looks good. Makes this too concentric and click OK. Next part will be the piston. This should go inside the cylinder, so you need to make it concentric and also the top hole should be concentric with this hole here. Good, now we need four pins, let's insert it and duplicate it three times. First we have to make them concentric with the right holes here on the lock. Now, since all these three pins have this surface in common, here we could use a trick to save some time. To do that, click here on the multiple mate mode. It will allow you to choose a common reference and many other different reference. The green surface will be the one in common and it will choose the end surfaces of the pins without clicking OK. Once I choose all of them, then I click OK and I'll have all of them in place. Let's, let's fix this pin as well. It looks OK, except that it's not really practical, you see? It doesn't make any sense. We should define a hard limit to prevent the parts to interfere with each other. You have to go to advanced mates, find the limit here, 
either distance or angle, I'll choose distance, which allows you to set a, min, a minimum and max distance. For what I want to do, I have to change the transparency of the cylinder so I can see its, its interior. Now I'm going to use this surface here and the surface here and set a minimum and maximum limit between them. First, I need to choose the surface, which is a little challenging because the transparency of the part has, has been changed. So I have to right click on the surface and select select other and find and find it in this list and select it. This options is one is for when you are not able to select your desired reference for any reason. Now select the limit distance, set the minimum at 8.5 and set the maximum at 24. Let's check it out. It stops and yes, it, it stops. But it also jumps at some point, which would be the second solution SolidWorks can find for the defined limits. Great. That was a very basic starter pack for assembly sections of SolidWorks. You now might wonder how I ended up here. You see, not everything went according to the plan. I told you it's fresh! What are you nuts? I don't want to get paid in that yellow man. Then allow me to take your bullets! At this point, I realized what a nut job he was. Wrong accent? But was a little too late, as he had his bullets ready. He didn't shoot me though. I never said I was shot. He dropped them in a sack and beat me with it. It's not over.